Good morning. I hope it's morning for you. It's morning for me. It's morning I like to talk. Um, I uh, am doing. I've decided to do a vlog. I think that's the correct nomenclature. I don't. I don't have. I don't have my nomenclatures down. My mom's Korean. Okay. Pigeon English. That's all I know. If that's even the correct way of saying it. Whatever. Anyway, so um, I'm going to do. I'm, I've just started Storm's King's Thunder, Storm King's Thunder with a, a group here in Hollywood, and I'm really excited. They're, I think they're excited. Um, we just made characters, so we had our first session. I just met them, because, yeah, I'm just, like, trying to get back into the D&D &D thing with the um, groups. and Because I've been doing it recently only, like, with family members and with clo very close friends, once in, like, one, one offs and stuff. Just, like, I'm trying to get a group together, you know? But uh, uh, it was funny on, on online. I found a group, and they're like in Hollywood. I'm like, yeah, in Hollywood. But they didn't have a DM, and I'm like, I can do it. They're like, they just jumped on me. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty excited. I hope they don't watch. I'm not even gonna tell them I'm making this video, by the way. Obviously, for, for this reason. So I'm doing Storm King Thunder with them, and and if you watch my other video, I'll, I'll probably put it in a playlist to explain to you how I'm gonna play it with them, or how I would play Storm King Thunder. And focus on the giants and get rid of all the other stuff. The other stuff's great. It's just I want giants. I want they're gonna go go for giants. And um, so let me tell you how I started that. Just and this is just extra help for DMs. Let me move my whack em tablet out of the way. I'm gonna do some drawing today. Little plug. I'm doing mini dudes. Just so you know. Um, ah! On on Patreon. And um, you know you can get you know if you're a soldier you get that. I know I just did that video, but I'm gonna talk again because I really am really excited about this. I'm just really enjoying it. Like these are my own goblins. I've done these. I can't really see, but those are my goblins. I drew all those, and these are my giants. There's a couple of D and D ones in here, and I haven't printed them all out yet. But let me pull out my giants. Explain to you what I'm doing with that. Uh, da, 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 da. I, oh, I have not printed out all my ogres I've drawn, but I'll just show you what I got. Kind of nerdy, excited here. In my own little world. Okay, so these are D&D &D ones I got, but just as filler. But, so to put the scale, then let me put it on a piece of paper. And I will be posting these on my Patreon very soon. I just haven't done it. There's a giant. Okay, you can see that. Here's another giant. There's a bigger giant. Probably a little too big. I might need to scale that down. Um, I was thinking he's like the tough one. There Now, I'm going to be doing crazed females because, you know, in the Storm King's Thunder story, see, they don't have this in the story, but I'm going to do this in the story. They, the, the main boss, Gru, she's kicked out all the other women, right? All the other females. And she's taken all the men, male giants. So what are they all? What are the females? Well, I'm like, wait a minute. They had one female that's in this tower that you meet and you could work with, maybe. I'm definitely going to have them work with her because they're going to need some help. But then I'm realizing there's got to be other females out there too. And they're probably going crazy, like rabid crazy. So they're going to encounter, I'm sure, a, a crazy, rabid hill giant female running around. Maybe she wants to be a goo as well. She wants to eat like crazy. So she's kind of starving and crazy, but 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 ravenous and crazy. And see, so I'm going to add that to it. And that's and it's like, a, and what, what I'm doing too is I'm introducing like not as as strong giants so that they can kind of handle it at third or fourth level and get a feel you know you want to you want to bring them in gently bring them in gently to the giants um i do have some young juvies but i didn't print them out but i have juvies that are actually a little smaller than this they're like in between the ogre and the hill giant you know and they're like a little faster they don't do as much damage but they're a little faster another rule i'm going to do i'm thinking about is i'm going to have them where they can definitely when when the giants hit you you're gonna have to do either strength or a deck save based on the hit points that you've taken. So if you've taken 15 hit points, you have to save on a 15 strength or dex up to you, or you get you get tumbled a bit. Like I'm, I'm gonna say 15 feet, the, the hit points. If you take 15, and if you fail to save, you, you tumble 15 feet in a direction, and you're prone. I'm gonna do that kind of stuff, because think about it, if some giant is throwing a tree at you, and he hits you, you you're, boom, you're knocked. So I'm gonna be playing that, but, to balance that out, I'm going to make the giants um, get tired. So their constitution is plus four. So every fourth round, they're going to actually be heaving because they've exhausted themselves. They're breathing. Think about 
like the whole thing on dinosaurs, how they have they have like small nostrils and, and small lungs, and they, they really can't last that long. And this is kind of thin atmosphere. But that's the same thing with these giants. They, that, I mean, they, the same with elephants, and they get tired after a little while. So every third, every fourth round for these, because they're plus four, they gonna they have to take a break, uh, or like they, they for one round they're just heaving because they got to recover, and then they can fight again after that. But I'm gonna do that. We'll see how it goes. You know, we'll see how it balances up. I, I like that idea. But again, they have the whole every time they hit, man, they got to save and get tumbled or or not. I think that's gonna be exciting. This is kind of a big tough ogre I did. Like he could be a giant, but he's maybe an ogre. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. And here's another giant I drew. Ba, ba, ba. Oh yeah. Oh, here's another female giant. This is the one that's gonna be at the old tower. And it's kind of blurry, but at least you can see. Look at that, man. And I've got more giants coming too. I drew a few more. I got two juvies, another one throwing a rock. Um maybe another one. I feel like there's another one. But anyway, you get that idea. So those are my look at that. Boom. Ready to go. And this is how my my mini dudes are packed. Okay, boom. All right. Bam, bam, bam. All right. So Storm King's Thunder. How I started. Um, oh, let me find their pictures real quick. Uh, but, but let me pause this while I find it. Okay, I don't need to pause it because I have it in here. Okay, so Storm King's Thunder, and I. I this is the stuff I discussed about their. Uh, what's going on? I got a little list of things. So when they, I also have a list here. When they go, or they're they're gonna head up Northborough Road, which is the road between Waterdeep and Golden Fields. And I have along the way possible things that they could buy or get along the villages. So this would be fun. And it also they can't afford this, but what's cool is they have a goal of getting these things. Like, oh, I can get leather armor plus one, three hundred gold. And they're not magical. They're just really well crafted, like really fitted, made well. Because that way I'll make them break and stuff at some point, you know. Um, uh, and then they're also going to get some minor heals, bread of sustenance, sustenance. If you eat that during a short rest, you get an extra two die heal. It's twenty five. It's twenty five gold. Um, herbs of healing takes ten minutes. So a lot of these healings, I like to do. You know, you can't just quaff it in the middle of a fight. Um, it's really just about helping heal after short rest and stuff. And then there, I've, I've considered some stuff for the different, um, you know, orders, like what they could offer if I if I have them encounter any of them. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Then, so yeah, here's their, they started at Waterdeep in a tavern. Yes, in a tavern. I just, what's cool is that this is a new group. Um, so we all make, so they make characters and they started off making the characters uh, first. And that took, let's see, from uh, five thirty. It was kind of an off off day. We we, we, we got together because of all of our schedules. Five thirty to seven. They ended. We ended up making characters, or they did. And I was just helping. One of them is totally new, and the other one, one other one, hasn't played in years. You know, he just got back into it, and this is his first getting back into it. And then the other guy um, is has done it for a couple of years now, but he seems well in tune to it all. And then we're gonna have a, possibly two more playing. Um, so, but but three for now. Anyway, I started them in a water deep in a tavern. That's the best way to do it. I'm telling you, um, and this oh, this is a, just so you can see. This is like a little town they'll be passing through. Oh no, they they're not going this way. But I still drew it anyway. And this will be by the way in my mini maps um, with my mini dudes. I'm gonna draw, draw I draw little towns, and I I'll probably take out the names so that you can just use this as a generic town in your own world. Um, you know, and create your own little titles and stuff. Uh, oh, so here's the characters. Um, you know, obviously, now th these are off the internet. I did not draw these. Did not draw these. These are off the internet. I don't have credits for them, but I appreciate people posting stuff on the internet, especially really good artists. And, you know, obviously, I'll, I just did a Google search and found Dragonborn Barbarian, um, Tiefling, and uh, Human Ranger. I just So if you want to see who did them and find, the, find these artists and how good they are, uh, that's what you all have to do, and you'll find, you'll find these images. I just did a quick search. And I did add this gold, though. Hopefully the artists won't get too mad at me. But I did add the gold because it's a gold, golden, gold dragon, golden boar dragon. So the, the character, um, barbarian, and then tiefling, uh, warlock, and then a human ranger kind of archer. So first adventure, what did I do? And then, and of course I didn't even know I wasn't sure we were gonna, I was going to DM uh, when they were making the characters. Uh, so we, but at like seven fifteen, and we were all I, was, I had to get out of there by eight. So seven fifteen, I started to DM. So I had forty five minutes. 
you know, to DM with them. And they're like, well, oh, what was cool is uh, the new guy. So he had made his barbarian and was kind of bored. And the other two were totally like, what, what, you know, talking to each other and making their characters and doing this and that. And we all, <laughs> everybody had a laptop on the table. It's kind of funny. Four laptops. And they're all like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, looking at each other's laptops. But the new guy was kind of like, well, how do you play? You know, he's kind of bumming. He kind of didn't know what to do now with himself. So I said, you know what? Here. So I put down I put down my three bandits, my little bandit guys. Or I had other ones, but whatever. I put down three. Two, two fighters and an archer. And I had him be his character. Oh, this is me. This is my little cutout of um, my little mini. I probably have to... Oh, I should make this my freaking Ike... Um, logo i think i might do that even though i didn't draw i'm gonna focus yeah i really want to show you this in focus um this is my come on why is my camera such a wussy camera Can you see it focus there we go. That's my suit of armor. No, my real suit of armor. I actually, that's my suit of armor. I actually wear that. Um, yeah, the helmet's behind me, I think. Yeah. That's the helmet. Those are gauntlets. Anyway, this is my little mini dude. I'm, I think I should make this my logo. And this is my wife's. We had we, this for a Halloween costume. I want to show her. She doesn't know I, well, she doesn't know I do. Uh, we, we, we actually have D and D date night. I'm gonna just, I don't know why I'm including this in this video, but we have a D and D date night, and it's just her and me, and it's high fantasy romance, and she plays that character, and the Black Knight is this sort of evil dude chasing after her. She's fleeing with a little party, little NPC, bunch of NPCs. Anyway, I'll probably talk about that later. Um, it's really cool. You should definitely have a date night, D and D date night. Um, so back to this. So there, they, so he he made his character. And he's bored. So I, I had a little little fight. He was a gladiator background, so I did a little like arena fight. You know, he had these little bar bandit dudes fight him. It was cool. He kind of learned. He learned to charge. He learned to do his breath weapon. Um, he learned, the, you know, mistakes, fumble. Um, the, the arrows really got him. The, the guy with the arrow really shot, got him down. The other two, he was totally beating them. Um, and he, he, he almost won, too, against three guys. He, he just rolled a one at the very end to charge the guy and then and take him down. And, you know, he stumbled. So then the guy got to shoot him and, and beat him. You know, he did die. It was a, it was like an arena, like a beat up kind of thing. Um, but he, he got a night. He got a, it was fun. He got a cool idea about it all. And I am using flanking, and I'm and the archer was able to run around behind him and shoot him uh, and get advantage, which I might do that or plus one. I did see another video concerning flanking, but I think it's as similar as um, I think I think it kind of says you know if you you know if the unseen attacker gets an advantage, right? It says that in the rules in player's handbook, unseen attacker. And so if I if someone's behind me and I don't see them, even if they, I'm, I'm finding someone and then there's another guy and he comes around me and I know he's there but I still can't see him, I feel because even in my own melee he does get an advantage, and, that, and, and a pretty good advantage too, especially if I can't see him because he's coming right at me or he can shoot me and I can't move or do anything to defend myself. I think an advantage is is, is proper because one it does take away your decks from your defense and two. Um, you're not using your armor to its advantage. Because when I wear my armor, I, I specifically position myself with my armor that it protects me because I do full steel fighting. So I feel advantage is probably right because you do not want to get someone behind you in, in when I do steel fighting. You, that, you are very concerned about that. Um, I should allow people to have a react too as well because when I... When I'm in a fight and I know someone's behind me, I freaking react. I move. I turn. I turn so that I have both people, you know. I don't want to get too crazy with the rules, though, especially with beginners and, and, and us still kind of filling out our chemistry. So I'm just going to keep it like that. If, if a creature or a player can flank someone and get a shot off, I'm going to give them advantage. It's, advantage is higher than a plus one or a plus two, for sure. Um, but I, I, yeah, I'm going to do that for now. We'll see. How the gameplay goes anyway so what i did for my little 45 minutes to start off intro i mean again i don't even have a chemistry with these people yet i don't even know you know but it was great i, I really uh, i you know i really do accents i really go for it i love to act out the characters i there'll be times where i'll have dialogue between my two npcs while they're all listening not 
I, it's still good because they they learn. You know, you still you're still doing story stuff. Um, and I do want to remind them in the next game that that when I'm in my character mode, you got and you got to tell your players too. When you're when I'm in character mode, they can interrupt me anytime. They should they. They do not have to sit there and listen to my entire dialogue or monologue. You know what I mean? So I'm going to let them know, dude, if I'm in character mode and I'm talking, you can talk. As soon, it, you know, you have to just sit there and go, oh, you can, hey, wait a minute, I, you know, you can immediately interrupt me. So I want to make sure they know that. Um, so what I did was um, they went to the watering hole. You know, it's in, in the docks uh, at Waterdeep. And I just described to them, Water deep like London. It's you know you gotta give them a description. Give them a feel, a quick feel of the place. I said fish scales everywhere, smells like fish. You hear seagulls. You, it's you know it's a dark night. The tap the water hole they're in is very low, dark wood ceilings, um, crowded in there. A bunch of pirates are all sitting around. You know, give them a feel for 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 it all. And they're all in there, and everyone's like, who are these two in here? The tiefling and a and a dragonborn, obviously, don't fit in. Um, so I did all that, and then. Um, and basically, what it was was that uh, Bard Buthin, or Buthin the Bard, he came in and he's trying to recruit him, crew guys to go up the river, you know, to go to Golden Fields, which is in the Storm King's Thunder, to help to be guards on uh, as they get the harvest and bring it back down. So I'm trying to give him a, a lay of the land too, um, through Theater of the Mind, Theater of the Mind, yeah, I think. Um, and so, and he did a little, you know, da, la, 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 trying to recruit people and. I, I, of course, I couldn't. I just pretended and did a couple little lines, but nothing great. But it still, it was, it was amusing to them, and um, that he's trying to, you know, that the bard is trying to recruit the pirates and the scallywags to, to get on the boat, the cog, and the river, the cog, and go up the river. Um, none of them want to do it because of all the rumors of the giants. You know, they haven't brought up the giants yet; just rumors of danger. And so the characters are all, and the characters don't know each other. But the tiefling and the dragonborn obviously are are immediately. You know, have a connection because they're totally different than all the rest of the humies and uh, human humanish type dudes in there. Oh, one interesting, cool thing, and I figured this out. And man, the, the player better not be watching this. But the Tiefling show, the guy that's playing her, created a backstory where. Now, first I was like, eh, but now I'm like, oh yeah. Um, and this is what it, you as a DM has to do. Has to do. You really, it's important when they give you a backstory, play it. Put it in the storyline somewhere down the road. Put their backstory in there. For instance, in another one, uh, uh, this 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 woman had an elf who, who left her father and was going to start off um, on her own, and she wanted didn't want to have to do anything. I was going to have an elf come come later on as a rescue device, and then you know rescue them if they were in trouble. And then he was going to just you know after after he rescued him, he's going to be like a high level ranger or whatever. He was going to say to her, "Your father wants you to return." You know, like this whole dialogue, I was going to bring in this sort of emotional tag there. Wait to hit this character, and then he was actually following them to tell her. And then he was going to give him her a gift from the, her mother, you know, like a little extra magic item, like minor sort of save or inspiration type thing. Um, say, well, if your mother gives you this and hopes that, you know. See, so you got to bring in their backstory. So backstory is important in that sense. You really want to play their backstory. So the gladiator's backstory is that he's a gladiator. And in their next adventure, I'll already bring this up later, but... Uh, I've already set up where he's going to fight the lo town local bully in an arena kind of fight, and that'll be fun. And the, and the town bully, um, not bully, but the town fighter, you know, uh, they all call him Happy. Oh, he's a halfo. He's just a halfo. I'm like, oh, okay. So then when they start a fight, turns out he's a half o -ger. Half o. See how clever I am? Half o -ger. So he's a half ogre, so he's a bigger, tougher, and that's gonna be fun. We'll see if that, how that goes. You know, be some, be some betting and stuff. So he's a gladiator, and he'll go around and do some fighting for a while uh, to get some money. Uh, the ranger guy, I don't know his backstory yet. Yeah, but so the tief he hasn't uh, he hasn't figured it out yet. Uh, the tiefling though, so her backstory is she was a sex life, sex life, uh, you know, bad in a, in a tiefling kind of bad place, and harem or whatever but she was also a warlock you know it's all they're all demonic and creepy in their in their way but so she um uh she made a deal with the demon to escape so the demon helped her escape but now the demon kind of oh owns her oh either owns her soul or whatever so i'm like man i don't want to i don't want to add a demon in here because there's there's the giants there's the dragons there's plenty of giants and plenty of dragons in this thing do i want to add a demon now i'm like i don't really want to add a demon so i was just thinking about that in the back of my mind 
And um, then I realized it. The uh, Kraken Society. The dude, the evil Kraken dude, he's the demon. I'm going to make him the demon. So that's going to tie the story in perfectly. He better not be watching this. Because um, I'm going to bring this in subtly with nightmare visions. And the, the, the Kraken dude has a drop of her blood in a vial. And that's why he can mentally see her anywhere out, out, out in the land and crush her heart. And same with the other guy that's in the story that, that, that he actually does this with, the Kraken. So to me, that's the there needs to be some sort of element of like, you know, I give my soul to you. So she gave a drop of blood to him uh, willingly to, to, to make this deal. And so now he owns her by it, as long as he has that drop of blood. And so at the end, when they go save Hecaton, um, she's going to find that that's where the vial of her blood is going to be. But also she'll have, I think she's going to have a protection too. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have Clouth, the red dragon with the red scale. He's going to give her a red scale. Or somewhere along the line, I'm going to give it to her. She's able to put, wear some sort of pendant that protects her heart from being crushed from the Kraken. Or blinds the Kraken to see her. Which is going to make the Kraken pretty furious. But but still she has to wear that until she can find it. And you know, and maybe the, maybe the the pendant or whatever, only la you know, it's going to wear down after a while. It's, you only have so much time before um and so that'd be that kind of amusing thing so that's gonna be cool interesting just yeah ah oh, that's gonna be cool all right so anyway so then ithil the halfling came into the tavern now bard the Bu the buthin the bard uh, bard buthin and ha it ithil the halfling know each other so I, that's where i had a dialogue they're arguing with each other and, and ithil is actually a caravan caravaner caravaneer caravaner caravaneer he 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 handles the caravans the wagons. So they're going to go up the North Furrow Road. So I'll show you. The, ah, oh, what did I do? What did I do? I popped up the. Um, interesting that I did that. Okay. Uh, so, so Bard the Buthin is trying to recruit him to go along the boat ride up to Golden Fields, right? To get the harvest because it's harvest time. And and also I made it clear that there's a lot of uh, worry about farmers and everyone's fleeing the north because of the because of st uh, the goblins and stuff. But the if the halfling is it got got in there and he's not supposed to go in there because this is for sailors only. And but he's all well, I'm running out of men. All right, no one's doing it, so I'm coming here anyway. So he's recruiting for guards to go up the North Furrow uh, Road here, and so they chose the North Furrow Road to go up that way with the wagons. And we did a whole gold pieces and you know fun little bargaining and all that with them and so if the halfling came with them to the merchant that ran runs the wagons and they bargained for more money or more gold um i didn't do this yet um but i do have some bandits and thugs if they need it but that, and that's as far as we got so 45 minutes so that's where i ended it where they know now they're going to get on the wagons and head up head up north and you know there's a fear of giants so this is one of the roads i'll probably play out with a little village um that they're saying oh this is the where the the yeah this is adventure two so i have adventure two already worked out and i'll, I'll go through that you know merchant gullet i'll go through that with them with you that how that plays out um but yeah this video is 23 minutes man i'm just talking away here enjoying myself but uh this will be the next adventure um the sergeant there's merchant gullet with the wagons and sergeant Ilko, and then a couple of weakling guards old hoot and a young dude that are going with them um the, the, these would be some tra travelers on the road but most are fleeing south right and i'm gonna have a bandit thing where they encounter a bandit all, with a sad little halfling farmer's widow and her children all, that they have to help out maybe if they don't they can skip it second encounter i'm gonna do i'm gonna do and the, the halfling story is gonna be a very sad story but hopefully they'll they'll fight the bandits get the wagon back cart back with the goats and help there and, and get some of the sort of local hero ship Second encounter, and I'm going over this. Second encounter is I'm just going to do a scary premonition. It's going to be a ward with a goblin up on the hill looking down at them. You know, cool little build up some tension there. You know, but the go the goblin is just scouting, and then he takes off, so he's not going to engage him. So that'll be cool. Scares some farmers that are on the road. And third encounter is going to be in the town where they can sort of see prices and things they could possibly buy, the healing things. Maybe see they're going to get they're going to see the tanner does a, the the leather armor and the wheel of right. Uh, shield maker who does shields and can plus one shield if they want and then there's going to be the arena challenge with happy happy oh just happy so that'll be fun and he's just like a half over dude local hero bumpkin and i made a little mini of him too um 
I'll show that later. Next time we, but uh, I made a little little half ogre mini mini uh, paper mini for him. All right, so that's that's it for this. To show you what I'm doing and how I'm playing Storm King's Thunder. I'm um, really enjoying it. Oh, this here is uh, Barge Wright. I'll show that later. Barge Wright and uh, Womford drew out my little version. But anyway, um, and that'll be on my mini mini maps or map map doodles, map dudes, map dudes. I'm doing mini dudes and map dudes um, for the Patreon. But anyway, okay. But really a lot of fun, and I should get back to writing. Because I need to get Alfred four or five, five done. Oh, and I got LA Comic Con this week. Tired. LA Comic Con. That's where I'm going there to see how that goes. Maybe I'll do a video on that. I should. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you're 